Death is our chariot of glory! No longer will we hunt in shame! Aye! Aye! I may not have fighting folks coming from my heart, but I have hands and I have a body and we can bring them to glory! Are you with me, man? Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me, man? Woo! <laughs> Are you gonna sit down and rub on your little tweeches? What's up, everybody? So, uh, another edition of Beer 30, Where Are They Now, is uh, coming to you at this moment. And uh, it took us a little time to wrangle this guy because he's uh, out there moving and grooving and uh, I'm pretty excited to have him here because uh, while Tom and I had our differences, I think he's just one funny son of a gun. And we're talking about Tom Smith, or in my favorite memory of uh, Tom Smith, the car guy, I'm thinking of Sheriff Buford T. Justice, which was actually played probably more perfect than Jackie Gleason did in the original Smokey and the Bandit uh, in 1977-78. So uh, come on in here, Tom. What's up, sir? You got your own beer? Well, yeah, I'm kind of involved with this garage beer here. We're not here in Texas yet, but we're up around uh, Ohio and Michigan and all that good stuff. Your beer? Well, I'm part of it. He's you know, part it takes, of it. Takes a tribe to make some beer, but uh, let me tell you, garage beer, it's light beer for guys who like beer. I like beer. Well, there you go. Me and you got two things in common. I'm kind of on the uh, water today because I broke my leg at SEMA, but uh, we'll deal with that later. Cheers, sir. He's got his own beer. What's up, everybody? So check it out. Before we jump back into this episode, I got something special lined up with our partners at DraftKings. That's right, DraftKings is sponsoring today's video and they've got a deal you won't believe. So folks, listen up. When you snag the DraftKings Sportsbook app and punch in my code GASMONKEYGARAGE and throw down just five bucks on any wager, they're gonna hook you up with 150 in bonus bets. Boom, just like that. That's 150 in bonus bets for just five bucks. That's the kind of fuel that turns any regular bet, well, into a barn burner. Now, those bonus bets, check it out. You can use them for things like DraftKings same day parlays, and you can combine bets from the same game for a shot at winning even bigger wins. And don't worry, if sports bidding isn't legal in your state yet, don't worry, because DraftKings Daily Fantasy is dishing out huge contests with bags of cash prizes. Remember, nitty gritty stuff, you gotta be 21 to play, eligibility restrictions apply, see the DraftKings terms and conditions for the, all the details. Now, what are you waiting for? Get that DraftKings Sportsbook app locked and loaded, don't forget to punch in my code GASMONKEYGARAGE, and bet $5 on any wager and you get 150 in bonus bets pronto. Now, let's get back to the episode. So, holy shit, Tom fucking Smith, man. You got your own beer. I know, but check this out. You had your own shop. You had uh, Tom Sweeks and you had Jordan and you had some other people and, and uh, what have you. So uh, tell me a little bit about, let's, let's just take it as, as a timeline. So you came to work at Gas Monkey. We were in the old shop. Yeah. Now that would have been about 2013, 12? Yep, it was 2012. No and, kidding. And uh, I, uh, I, I talked to Aaron, and then I talked to you, and, and you all thought I was odd, and I fixed a couple things, and then said, come talk to you after you open this shop. And uh -huh. I did and then you hired me. One of the things I remember the most was uh, it was an old car. Uh, there's a really cool old picture, uh, hopefully the guys behind the cameras can find it, that actually we antiqued to make it look like it was back in the day. And um, it the was Rio? A, it was a Rio, that's what it was, because it was like crank and it yeah. showed up and I'm like, do whatever you got to do. And you got that son of a bitch running. I, yeah, I don't mean, uh, I still have the shop manual of that vehicle. So you stole the shop manual? Yes, I did. Okay, now we know. Yeah. I was looking for that the other day because I had to fix a Rio. But, uh, did you really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you got that thing running. I mean, and it was full of rat's nest and Oh, and just and... getting get the, I mean, I had to water the freaking wheels because those wooden rims, 
the, 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 the wood had shrunk and I had to soak them in water to get the smoke to swell up so the rims wouldn't fall off the rims. I had to do all kinds of crazy stuff that day, and stuff that I had never seen. Well, if in my I remember life. right, we started it right over yeah. here, and I was pissed off because it started blowing out all the smoke and just flooded this place with uh, mice remnants and oh, dust oh, and oh, hay. oh, yeah, it was, it was the, the, everything toxic. The man was coming out. That Rio, it had uh, had beehive valve springs and it had overhead valves. In 1917, there was only one other guy at the time that had overhead valves and it was some crazy guy over in Italy called Itor Bugatti some guy well he's done pretty well for himself oh did he <laughs> <laughs> but that's how that, that's how ahead of the, the curve uh, I mean it's 1917 and he had he started putting the valves in the head where they belong instead of the the flathead stuff yeah golly so for those of you that don't know you got to go back and watch some of the old episodes uh, Tom and I had uh, a pretty good love-hate relationship uh, yep. because he's he's a character and I'm a character and so sometimes you got to fight for that TV I, time. I was late every day. Late would be an understatement. Yeah, I was. Uh, sometimes you just wouldn't show. Uh, yeah. You were late today. We were supposed to be doing this an hour and a half ago. There. Look at that. Yeah. Fast forward to a little bit. We're going to go back and forth in the future and the timeline and everything. But uh, what are you, where are you at now? What are you doing? I, now I'm at this place uh, called uh, Dallas uh, Customs and Classics. I've heard and, of them. All right. Uh, we're, 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 we're actually a stone's throw down the road here. And uh, I, I work on hot rods there. I've been doing a lot of uh, work with uh, uh, ACs. I actually was able to go on. Like air conditioners? Yeah and put an AC in, the, in these cars. Oh, okay, so you're adapting yeah. some old hot rods for AC. Yeah, and All right. uh, I actually created a cloud in a 70 uh, Monte Carlo. I got, It was 107 degrees outside and I got 37 out of the ducts and it started making clouds in between us. The, the, the vapor started transitioning. Did y'all hear that? Tom Smith can make clouds in a car. And then, uh, because see, people have known me for my flatulence and they would accuse me, but no, this was actually with the AC and, and not my digestive system. Mm -hmm. You had a little bit of a health scare here a while back. Oh, my, I, I, I've been dying uh, for almost 20 years. I've been dying. I mean, and I've been to 50 doctors, none of them. I mean, they, they give me Prilosec and all this stuff, which only just made it worse. And all this time, uh, what it was, it was I was eating food and I was basically a Cuisinart. I, I would digest the fat, but I wouldn't, dig I wouldn't get any nutrients, and I was like running off, I was burning my own muscle. And really? I had gout, and my joints all swole up, and my knee would go this big and that big, and I had to get drained and dizzy and fall down, and uh, I looked like- I thought you were just TV. drunk. No, it, it was, I was a mess. <laughs> It was a But you're feeling better now. Oh, I, I feel so much better. I mean, I, I did, uh, I, I, I'm acting to do push-ups again. I went, I walked around White Rock. You can Rock do push-ups. Yes. Yeah. Want to see them? I can do push-ups all day long. And right, well, we'll get to that in a little bit, but I just but don't anyway, know. Because we'll that's a big belly. Closer to the ground, so, so I, I don't know how, you don't got to go that far. Right, not unless I prop up my butt and then it looks funny. Yeah, that'd be, I don't want to yeah. see that, Tom. <laughs> Uh, fired up garage, you know, when, when I, when I, um, and I did kind of, I guess I did fire you and, and Jordan and, and I told you, you know, it, if you'd pay attention and you, you listen to me, I could get a show and I could do it and, and we could make this, uh, uh, misfit garage and you guys went along, uh, and then, uh, fired up garage came along and, uh, it was a hit. Yeah, we rocked it. You did, you did, but, uh. You know, it was so different than Fast and Loud because y'all right. were just such a different cast of characters. Well, it needed to be. I mean, we needed, nobody wanted the same stuff. It had to be different. You took the old Phipps building, yep. uh, which is where we started as Gas Monkey back in the early 2000s. What'd you think about that experience? We, we never were a team. And uh, they, everybody was always at everybody's throat. It was actually uh, the, probably the most negative, I mean, Everybody wanted it to call, I mean, you, you had uh, Thomas Weeks over there screaming, it ought to be the Thomas Weeks show, and then you got John John Clump saying it ought to be the John Clump show, and uh, and everybody 
knew it was my show, and I'm the only one that uh, was didn't care. I sh I said it should be our show, not. Well, the Thomas took it a little further. He actually thought that y'all had a business called Fired Up Garage, and that he could go around and start selling T-shirts and and uh, going to car shows and all this well, kind we, of stuff. Well you, well, you taught him that money's in the merchandise, and that's your fault. Well, I know, but I own that brand. <laughs> Thomas handed me a business card one time that said Fired Up Garage. I said, where the fuck did this come from? And uh, uh, he goes, well, it's my company. We, we got Fired Up Garage. I said, what in the hell are you talking about, man? I said, that's hey, my garage. You, you taught this guy to go fishing in, uh, whenever he... he uh, well, Thomas Weeks yeah. is a different character. I mean, what, yeah. what do you think about old Thomas? I mean, that guy can cry like that, like he, real tears. Oh, yeah. He 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 He'll is, make you feel bad. He is the consummate salesman. He he uh, he he's really good at reading people and he knows how to, to work emotions. Do you know how many times and this is a trivia question for everyone out there, so go back and watch some of the episodes and make sure you're following us on YouTube. But uh, how many times has Thomas Weeks found his dad's originally purchased car in some unknown area? I, I, would, I don't want to imagine that. It's got to be like 15 or 20 times. I mean, it, it has to be easy. 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 Yeah. This yeah. is my dad's car. Yeah, and he's crying. Get his, sister, his sister used to bust his balls when we had her on the show. Oh, my God. I love his sister. She would just. Did you, ever, did you ever take her down? Huh? Did you ever take her down? Oh, she was she was uh, she was awesome. I, All uh, right, yeah. I think we we'll just not read into that. Yeah, now we well, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> God bless her. She was but she 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 was fun. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I got to love hate with Thomas Weeks too, and and mm. uh, you know his dad and his mom. I had the opportunity to know them, and they they were uh, they were different, but they were great people, and they were very generous and uh, helped me in the early years. So yep. uh, I I can't go too bad, but. Uh, you know, at the same time, uh, yeah, what I, about that fucker, uh, Parrish, Josh Parrish? Um, man, I uh, I heard he done uh, ran, ran off in this building hot rods with some some dude. Uh, he's he's back here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, come on in here, Josh. Uh, so, we're gonna so, get we're so gonna get you, some some two on one here. So, so Josh you, worked so for you, me for a little while. So you took the only talent I had at my shop. Don't be mad at me, Tom. He's the talent. He, he took the only talent I had, and now he's working here. Yeah. Are you making money? He treats us okay. I okay. always treat yeah. my employees okay. He definitely treats us okay over here. Well, <laughs> I've put on a few pounds since back then, Tom. Well, he's <laughs> actually lost a few pounds, too. He had to work he's hard during the season. But, uh, you better so, take care of him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, take, I like this guy. You know I, mean, I take care of my employees. You never miss a paycheck. You never miss a meal. We take care of it here. Well, I mean... Uh, well, I, keeping I, up with your food know, bill was a little rough. I know where the best dumpsters are. I mean. <laughs> so, I, I all right. So, I want to know between the two of y'all working at Fired Up Garage, which was a mythical creation of my mind, to make the show Misfit, uh, and uh, we put uh, Tom and Tom and Jordan and Thomas and some of the other guys in there, and you um, and Crum and what have you. Yeah, I mean, what was the worst experience? Yo. God, the whole I'll, last season. I'll, All right. <laughs> I had my whole toolbox stolen. Stolen? Yeah, that, was, that was probably the worst. Yeah. 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 yeah and, the, and, the, and the whole, the whole core, I mean, I, I had more tools than everybody you ever hired. I remember you had a big old box. No, no, something. no. That was just the, uh, that, that, that was, I had, I had six, six other boxes you didn't know about. Yeah, we got, we got broke into and I had tools stolen he had tools stolen I had, I, I had my whole core stolen mm -hmm. it, anything that was on a rail or a complete set or anything was gone and uh, and there was only uh, two people or three people knew that the electricity was turned off and I wasn't one of them and uh, they all disappeared well I heard a lot of stuff over there disappeared towards the end the, the entire oh my, oh, AC yeah. Uh, units like disappeared, like the air conditioning yeah, that we put in the shop I mean, that just takes was missing. Time. That takes, I mean, it takes ladders and time, and, and that's not a one person deal doing stuff like that. Now, did you guys ever get after each other? Pissed no. off? Uh, no, 
No. No, not me. No, he, he, he and I, we, we, we jailed and... No, actually. I, I, I don't even think a harsh word ever was ever spoken between us. Well, uh, I, 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 yeah, well, you know, you're going to speak harsh when, when you're in a shop. You're going to talk some I mean, shit. There was vulgarity, but not harsh. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, I was really proud of the show, and it did well. We made, what, 60, 70 episodes? I don't remember. A whole bunch of them, and, and they all rocked. I mean, they were all solid, and... Uh, uh, um, I mean... There were so many things on Discovery that wasn't doing good that didn't get taken up and canceled, and that, that, that's all that was. I mean, you, well, you know. to be honest, the problem at the Discovery and the reason everything went away was my fault. I can't discuss it due to legal contracts and binding things that were made by lawyers and smart people. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it was kind of my fault that everything kind of went away. Do you know that there is an episode of our show? that I did completely naked and we called it we're afraid he's naked instead of naked and afraid and um, oh wait, wait, wait that wait, was wait. towards the end right uh, no it was a third uh, third season and anyway anyway it was fired up or of uh, uh, gas uh, monkey uh, fast uh, and laugh uh, fired up okay and and there was so much good footage in it i mean i was in there naked and it was cold and i would start and and they had them 4k cameras and you could actually see the contrails of the gaseous fumes as i mean i'm telling you and it was like art and it was like curling and swirling and had paisleys and and just uh the, as it had dissipated into the air and another time i mean i was welding and this big old chunk of metal hit me in the belly and it made a mushroom sound. Like, is, is this true or is he? No, I, I walked in at one point in time and he was standing there with nothing but a Dickies cup on <laughs> Dickies and he was grinding metal. So yeah, no, this is all true. And then that was, well, for such a big man, I thought you needed like a, a, a you know, a big bean can or something. Dickies yeah. cup kind of small. I, well, I, I mean, uh, some people are made for pleasing people and I'm not that guy. I'm made for being. <laughs> I'm made for being pleased. You know what I'm saying? I know my role. My role is to have people make me happy and not vice versa. Well, you know? I get it. So uh, you yeah. are not a uh, a yeah. pleaser. No. Yeah, you were. Uh... <laughs> so we die. But I can't be pleased. <laughs> you out of here? Yeah, yeah. Are you me. loaded? You have fun. You got a, uh, I, I mean, as far as, man, uh, I didn't mean is he loaded. He's not going to even out of here yeah. drinking and driving. He's uh, leaving out of here because we got the uh, GMC uh, C10 and turkey drags this weekend. So we're going out there with the truck. All right, be cool. Be safe. All right, now that he's gone, Tom, we can talk some serious shit. What kind of asshole was he? Oh, uh, he was great. I, All uh, right. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> he, 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 I mean, I, I, I hired that guy. I was said, I, I need that guy. Uh, I, I mean, we, uh, we were having a uh, well, uh, hiring the problem day, was, and, then, and I said, no, I want that guy. I think the problem was back in the day when he worked here uh, with Aaron. Aaron, um, um, he wanted to be the most skilled person in the room. And, and Josh has got mad, mad skills. Oh, my God. Which does. is proven. Uh, with him and the team that we put together oh, here oh, at Gas yeah. Monkey now we, with that GMC. Yeah. That's probably the finest vehicle we've ever turned out of Gas Monkey. And I don't mind saying that. It's not a downplay to when you guys were here or when whoever was here. It's that we're constantly evolving. Yeah, well, we're uh, we're yeah, getting well, better at our craft. We're, we're learning. We're building more. We're taking more risk. Aristotle said, if you want to... Oh, wait, I got to say it right. You have to surround your people who are better at doing stuff than you are, and that's how you improve yourself. And yes, he uh, he has a skill set that's uh, he, he, I mean, John Clump held him back so much on, that uh, I mean, his skill set didn't even get to really shine on our show because of uh, the negativity and the. Uh, yeah, that's why I give these guys, and you worked here. I give everybody like just do it. You know, it, it, and, and well, one of the things about the monkey, you, you know this. Well, well, you don't well, have to like me, but you better love that monkey. You right. better represent it right. Yeah. Well, 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 well. Aaron, well, I, I worked under Aaron, and Aaron was a uh, he. He and I, he and I did not get along at all. Well, you, well, you know that. Aaron hated me because I would come up with something, and if he didn't come up with it, Aaron was mad because 
at me because he didn't come up with it. <laughs> well, there's a lot to be said there, but uh, you know, it, it took, God, God it took the village you. to get us here. It yeah. took everybody that came through here. That's why I'm really kind of enjoying this series is because I'm getting to see everybody again. And, and some of those times were hard. I mean, I bet you there was times when I fucking did not even want to deal with you at all for weeks at a time because I had so much stress going on trying to make the show. Yeah, and, and, trying you, had, to make the and you had so much in your ear. I mean, you had, you had uh, I can mentally, okay, everybody mentally picture having this monster that has 900 mouths and every one of them are in his ear telling him something at the same time. It and, was crazy. And then, then you can appreciate the, and and you gotta weed out the crap and, and well, 900 mouths at one time will, not give you a whole lot of time to, to, to call out the mess and uh, let's talk about Buford T Justice because you, the best thing I've ever seen you do. I go back and watch it every once in a while just because it's the funniest. <laughs> you nailed that part. I mean, sure, I shaved my goatee and wore a mustache and I became kind of Burt Reynolds, but you were freaking Buford T Justice all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was I, that freaking cool or what? I, I, I had so much fun. And uh, we made a movie by watching a movie. There was no script. There was no nothing. It said, watch this movie and you better know every last part of it. So that's what we did. And, and it, it, it rocked. It, it really, I had, I, I, I really did that. Uh, I, I probably watched that movie 30 times before we uh, we left. Well, that sucks because I'd seen it 30 times before we well, even well, thought no, I, about it. I had seen it though, a bunch of times also, but I'm talking about back to back to back to back to back. That, that, that's, uh, I, I know the editor of Millennials it. back here are going to throw in a little bit of this, but you freaking nailed that yeah, well, so freaking well. What we have here is a total lack of respect for the law. I know where there is a boat, and this boat is a crazy boat. This boat was owned by the guy that invented the floppy disk. And this, this boat is a 1965 Chris Craft Satellite Senator. And what, so, so what, it's a boat. Well, this thing is laying on its side on an island in a, a and it has two 427 side oilers in it. Okay. You got my attention. But if it's on an island laying on how long has it been laying there? A while. Well, that's salt. I don't know. That's but, salt air. That could be no, a problem. No, 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 no. This is that Lake Texoma. Oh, so that's lake. Yeah, Lake Texoma. Okay. Uh, so why is it just laying there? Because uh, I think it would be cool to go there and with a, just a maybe a, a a flatbed with a uh, with a with a back, with a backhoe or something, just go in there and with some chainsaws, and because the boat's junk, it's toast, and it's been stripped of everything. But nobody knows that those are four twenty seven side oiler motors. That make well, is anybody taking the heads? No, carburetors, the intakes. Yeah, they took the carburetors. Are they dual four setups? Huh? Were they dual four setups? No, they were single fours, All but. Right. But it's you got the bump on the side. The bump on the side. I don't know, man. I'm gonna let you chase that ghost story. Yeah. So let's get I into. I with my own eyes. Are you sure? Them bright blue eyes you got right there. Scouts honor. Scouts honor. Is it three for scouts or two? Yeah. I don't even three. know. Three. Three. Yeah, scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind. Obedient, thrifty, cheerful, and uh, ergonomically sound or something. Do you know when a Cub Scout becomes a Boy Scout? <laughs> Holy shit, I wish we could show that, but we will be selling, showing that. But God damn, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I made a joke today. I need to try it on you. All right, go. What do you call it when you give a woman pleasure with a boat paddle? I don't know, sir. An orgasm. <laughs> I didn't see that coming, Tom. <laughs> he, 
It was so simple that I just couldn't see it. Ah, dang it. For some reason, I think you might have even thought up that joke. But, that, was like, uh, yeah, that was mine. I, that was, that was there like, you go. Yeah. Tom's jokes. Uh, when are you going to write a book, Tom? I actually need to. Would you actually write it or type it or just speak it into I, the I, would, I, would ha- I, would, I would actually probably have a... I would have the written part, and then I would be the, the drawn out idea part. That there, there, there would be, there would be. There would be tablets. diagrams in this book. Yeah, there'd have and to demonstrations. Be yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I might bankroll that. I got to see yeah. this. Yeah, this I, would I be amusing that, for everyone. I, I think it would. Uh, and maybe informative. I mean, I think somewhere in there is this amazing brain that just uh, can't get out of its own way. It's starting to now. Is it? Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, let's see. Your favorite memory of being on Misfit Garage? Mm, was I spent, uh, we, we, I spent two weeks with Billy Gibbons in Sweden. What? Uh, with, with ZZ Top? No, with Billy Gibbons. Well, ZZ he's Top. part of ZZ Top. Yeah, but no, it was just Billy Gibbons. He, I have a picture that he drew of me on my wall. So, the Billy Gibbons two weeks in Switzerland, why did you, uh, what was the purpose? Because I didn't see that on the show, did I? I know, but I'll believe I'll tell you, the, 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 all the stuff that they deleted on that show, I'm mean, like, uh, like me and Sue had some crazy fun footage and they never used any Now, were y'all of actually dating like they said in the tabloids? Uh, no, no, no. I miss Sue, she was great. Sue actually did acupuncture on me. Did they film that? No, they shot her. I can do acupuncture on you. I got a dark yeah, but, gun. But Sue, I mean, Sue, Sue knows. She, she has this whole big thing and it's got different needles and different colored ends and, and we're in this chart and, and, and like you stick you in the elbow and it's good for your eyesight and crazy shit like that. Yeah, I wouldn't let Sue do acupuncture on me. She chased me out with a sword a few times, and then she'd get all uh, hyped up on Hennessy and start uh, trying to kill me, and then she'd charge me too much. Discovery kind of jerked her around a little bit. Well, I tried to help her with the Discovery thing, but uh, again, uh, uh, Discovery could have been a lot nicer to her. Discovery wasn't super nice to any of us, uh, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, I think, I mean they're, they're making billions. Of, I mean, they're, they're, are, are, I mean, I'm, I'm getting a, uh, and on my phone right now, I probably our shows are played in, in Israel, Palestine. It's uh, all over the Middle East and uh, and Argentina. I probably get forty hits a day from people saying how great our show is from Argentina, and uh, and they're making all this money, and uh, and we made beans. I, I'd be a millionaire right now if I kept my business, but... Are you talking I, about that uh, breathing device thing? I, actually, I got that patented. You got in the patent. I have a... I had my third patent. What was the first two? Uh, the, uh, my very first patent was a mailbox lock that, uh, that I uh, sent to Ronco, and they said, congratulations, you have the patent, but uh, since you sent us the thing, you signed the thing, they got to sell it. And the second thing, I, I actually, uh, I worked on television towers, and believe it or not, this is a thing that you would think would be natural. The, okay, you have this giant hoist, and it's rift, lifting up stuff, and, and you, got a, you got a lead guy on the tower, and you got a guy running a hoist. Until I thought it up, no one ever, there should be a kill button that if something goes wrong, that you push this button because you can't talk fast enough in the transmission get to the guy on for it to stop, stop everything. But well, anyway, I invented a kill button that the lead guy has on that turns off the hoist and dogs it and so people don't die. You invented the kill button. Yes. All right. You know, that's... But I'm a, I was like co I came up with the idea, but other people kind of helped me. And then me you work patented out. your breathing. My, my breathing. I have a I have a device that uh, cures so many people of snoring. I've gotten like sleep over apnea. Five, I've gotten like uh, 500 people off their CPAPs, and like people that have a problem whenever they exercise, they get dry mouth. Totally cured. Well, that'd be a like a water bomb. No. No. 
No. What would it be? It'd breathing through your nose. Well, that'd be shutting your mouth. Yeah. So you, so you you actually got a larger hole for your nose and your trachea than you do for your mouth. So your mouth don't filter no air, and whenever you're breathing, you're getting taken in Obviously flies we don't and the bees hate the same and the kind of girls. <laughs> God dang it. We can't tell you what we were just talking about because we'd be uh, we'd be kicked off our own channel. <laughs> our own channel people would kick us off. But uh, anyways, I just, um, I just hear this record player and they need a Exactly. Exactly. And you gotta be careful. You gotta, you know, yeah. people that are watching this probably don't even know what a record player is. But uh, no, Tom, it's been it's been super cool and, and and I've had a lot of good times looking back at all this and seeing the different relationships that I had with different people and the people that came through and people that made it, people that didn't. And now our shop's completely different. Yeah. And uh, it's just been a wild freaking ride. Right. And uh, I, I am proud of everybody that came through, almost everybody. Um, well, you definitely pulled the cream of the crop out of our shop getting that Josh guy. Well, your shop's been closed for years. He just came to work for me like a year. Seven well, or eight months ago. Looks like you're a little slow getting him then, Slagger. Well, he was busy. Uh, I heard he was out mending fences. He was he was accomplishing his welding experience while he was building fences. Building fences. Yeah, I think out in the country, keeping doggies in or whatever. Them, you're kidding. Them wild animals that we turn into uh -huh. hamburgers. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, you had to bring up hamburgers, didn't you? Well, shit. I might even buy you a hamburger. I mean, I'll give you a coupon or something. I ain't going with you. Well, uh, I understand. All right, cool. Tom, Tom Smith, everybody. This this guy was here when we were first getting started, and it's, uh, it's actually not that bad. I mean, <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I think that's his way of saying it. It's pretty good. But uh, I gotta tell you, Gas Monkey was built on the blood and sweat equity of these guys and yeah. gals that have come through here over time. It's been a it's been a, an amazing journey. And uh, stay tuned for more of Beer Thirty. Where in the hell are they now? Woo! You know what we needed to finish this with? What's that? Snorting a shot of tequila. Well, let's go do it. Yeah. I ain't doing it on camera, though. What? <laughs>